everyone, Feedy here with him, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video, where today we'll be covering the 7th Enclosure Titan Exotic, and the recent buff is received. Now I've already created a build video a few days ago covering what the buff means for the exotic, and how you can make full use of it, but I felt like it would be a wise idea to break it down further and give you other ideas as to how you can expand the exotic further, and any other important information that you may need to know up till now. So to start things off, I'll explain what the exotic does. Short and simple, it produces a AoE blast upon enemies kill with a new ethnicity, and gets even more stronger and more wider in terms of AoE depending on how strong the enemy is. It can also provide a knockback blast upon those nearest blast radius who somehow survive, and can even work via depleted swords to proc explosions as well. Fairly simple and easy to use, this exotic will be useful for those that want to kill rooms full of minor enemies in a mere seconds. And you get pretty crazy too using when chaining with your finishers or certain subclasses to also proc it further multiple times. Now back in Season of Dawn the exotic only proc'd via finishers in PvE, which made it very situational best to use in most activities. In PvP this exotic functioned upon powered melee kills which made it viable in some fights, however it was still very situational as the perk and exotic as a whole was more useful when catching a whole group out, which in PvP everyone knows is not an easy task. With this being the case, the 7th enclosure was easily overlooked by other exotics with better usage and functionality in content, such as the feedback fences or doom marchers, which are identical to what the 7th does, but provide a better uptime overall in use of content with lack of restrictions. With the introduction to Season of the Worthy, the exotic has now changed to where it procs off powered melee hits in PvE, so middle tree throw and hammers, a bottom tree code the earthshaker, hammer strike, etc. All of these are in powered millies, and as long as you kill them with a powered millie, it will now always proc. This means a number of things. Firstly, you don't have to always use your finishers to proc the exotic, which is a major red flag for the exotic back in the Season of Dawn, because of how limited it was. Now we have the choice to always proc it through alternative means. Secondly, the exotic can now be ranked to around the Doom March's level of usage, where upon it being equipped, meaning you could put this on for any content from story missions to PvP and still be effective in the background without needing a certain method to activate it all the time. It's just put it on and go to town. And thirdly, it works for your supers, but only with the melee action, so all of the void and arc subclasses and military solar get everything basically, all subclasses can work off it, as long as you use the melee options only. Now how useful it is in PvP is very situational like I said, in this clip here you can see me activate my super and use my melee, which instantly takes them out, but at the same time you can notice those that do survive it get flung into the air via the exotic AoE blast, which doesn't outright kill them, but it basically leaves them vulnerable, and from there you can keep procking it over and over and over again until your super runs out and pretty much leaves them so vulnerable that they can't fight back. So it's basically a win-win situation. Its viability in PvP is always good, I've noticed, if you're happy with getting up close and personal to players, and using the Code of the Earthshaker or Code of the Fireforge for the power millies are probably the safest method to do so, well not safest, but probably the best methods of doing so. And then further combining them with your super that uses melee as a base secondary attack also means you can be pulling off explosions all the time. The only downside to using this in PvP is the fact that you have to get up close and personal to trigger it, which in PvP isn't an easy feat on itself, especially when trying to pull this off in a group of players, so if you do try to do this, make sure you have the higher ground first before attempting this, because you may end up disliking it in the end. So you're probably wondering what else do we need to be aware of? Well, I did some further testing to find out a few things that I thought would be appropriate for players, such as the damage produced via the AoE blast on PvE enemies, how wide this blast radius gets, and what is considered a powered melee hit for procking it. So let's first take a look at the blast radius. The blast radius upon detonation will always be on you and nothing else, which means the code of the devastator throwing hammer won't become a mobile explosive stick for your fun and glory, sadly. From testing, depending on enemy type you face, both the damage and radius will also increase, with majors being the max potential range it can hit. Here's some numbers I have managed to get. Minor red bar enemies have a max range of 5 meters with a blast radius damage of around 5000, 
which in the tribute hall means I can take out two or multiple red bars near me. Elite barred enemies have a max range of 14 to 15 ish meters, with blast radius damage of around 6000. So both elites near me, plus the two red bars, and can even hit the mages as well. Now the major bar enemies have a max range of 20 meters, with a blast radius damage of around 9000 up close, and 7000 at its max blast radius, which is an incredibly high and pretty much can wipe out a whole group of adds there and then, excluding the majors depending on their health. And ultras now have no effect whatsoever, which makes sense as they are considered endgame bosses or raid bosses. If they did proc off this, it would most likely have the same damage and blast radius as majors, for balancing reasons. Or if Bungie decided to say heck it and decide to patch this in to make it so that it can proc off it. For example, it would probably be like a nuke level coverage, with damage and range being something that would probably, well, I, I couldn't really explain it until they actually showed it to us. But I can see why they wouldn't add it into the game, it would just be too broken. Now this is all strictly for PvE, as in PvP it was slightly more harder for me to require the damage number and AoE blast because of how chaotic the environment is. But roughly, I can say that the AoE blast is around 5 to 7ish meters, which is more than enough to catch a group of players off guard and pretty much allow you to, well, clean up from there. But from seeing the overall damage and AoE blast from the Zotic alone, it shows that the added on buff for the Zotic has truly made it a worthwhile item to acquire. And keep with his strength being more useful in PvE rather than PvP. The AoE damage may not be the strongest for taking out majors and some elites, but it's still strong enough to push them into a finisher phase for you to go in and proc it again, if or else fails. Now in terms of triggering the exotic, all subclasses from the Titan subclass 3 can trigger it as long as it's powered melee. So we have Seismic Strike, Ballistic Slam, Frontal Assault, Hammer Strike, Mortar Blast, Burning Mal, Defensive Strike, Shield Bash and Tactical Strike. This also extends into your super as well like previously mentioned, as long as you use your melee to deal the damage. So if you really want to make full use of this, I would recommend, for an ideal for build, I recommend you roll with a high strength stat of 50, 60 or 70, have the Monte Carlo and an easy to use melee that will one shot all the time like the Hammer Strike or Seismic Strike. On top of that, add on some super regaining mods as well and you have a really crazy time with this build in PvE or from my experience PvP, especially in PvP. Things will get very heated and a lot of players will probably end up avoiding you or keeping a close eye out from you. So overall, is the Severance Enclosure worth getting? Yes, by the heavens, yes, 100%. Before, it didn't really have much of a place back in PvE because of how restricted it was. And PvP it was extremely situational to pull off 9 out of 10. Plus, other exotic with the same or similar function operated much better than the sevens did. But now, the exotic can clear out rooms of enemies with a simple empowered melee, and the right circumstances can allow you to cause a chain reaction of explosions, which is a beautiful sight to witness. Nothing else has changed for the PvP side of things, as it's still good but situational at best. But PvE, I can see the exotic getting some love now because of how much of the buff is actually more useful in pretty much any type of content, even end game I would say is up there for clearing out groups of ads when you need it the most. So overall what I would say is that if you haven't got the exotic yet and want to have something extremely beneficial for clearing out areas of ads there and then, such as gambit, strikes or even story missions, then I recommend the 7th enclosure now. You honestly will not be disappointed and you will honestly fall in love with it like I have, as you can clearly tell. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, a link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.